Introduction. You know, 90% of success is just turning up, right? So I'm glad you could make it. I'm Andology, this is 2019, and this video, we're gonna be chatting about what we've got coming up on this channel over the next year, and in fact, just even over the next weeks and months. Um, I've got so many projects that I've been working on, there's so many things that are unfinished that I thought to myself, you know what? Let's get it all in there together. Let's do it together. Let's share it with you guys. Um, I've got some, you know, some of you guys out there It's very intelligent, very knowledgeable people. You've proven that in some of the great comments that you've left on some of my videos. I've had so many people like the videos, which is, again is really important to me. And so really appreciate that. And I thought to myself, you know what? I need to get out there more. I need to, you know, start sharing some more of the work that I'm doing. Um, I've learned so many things that I, I can't wait to share with you guys um, about all sorts of topics. And it just seems like a waste of information if I'm not sharing it out, right? Let's change that. As of from today, that's my pledge. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I've sort of done a short list of some of the projects that I've been working on, some of the things that I think I could be, you know, doing some like build logs, stuff like that, and some ongoing videos that I'll be doing. So I've put like a little brief snippet together um, of each one, I say brief, you know me. Uh, but the idea is, you know, you can check it out, some of the things that I've got coming up. Um, if there's something that you're quite passionate about, something that you'd wanna learn more about, just jot a note in the comments um, and I'll be checking through, checking it out and seeing what sort of things people like more than others. Um, and of course that will, what, what will drive me towards, you know, what I put my focus, focus my energy into uh, in terms of content topics and things. So that's the plan. Um, so yeah, like I say, really appreciate your likes, really appreciate people that have subscribed. Um, share this channel as wide and far as you can. Uh, it's important we try and grow it so that we can give back to as many people as we can. The bigger the community is, the more problems we can solve together. Um, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So in the meantime, sit back, relax, check out these projects and let me know which ones you think are pretty up your street. So thanks. The Ultimate Antenna Tracker. First up has to be the Ultimate Antenna Tracker. This was something that I designed a while ago. Um, there's a few videos out there, uh, links in the description. Um, one of the d initial design concepts and then um, one of the first prototype working. Wow, what can I say? I mean, such a massive result in terms of people contacting me and you know all the compliments. And uh, I had one guy actually offer me his kidney um, <laughs> for one. So I appreciate the feedback, it's been epic. And I think the problem is, there's not an awful lot out in the market. You know, people like us who, you know, sort of want to be able to do the long range FPV, we know about the antenna tracking, we know the importance of having high gain antennas. So I put a lot of work and effort into this. So, so some would call it over engineered, but that was kind of the whole point. Um, it was over engineered so that I could swing around the big old Yaggies that you saw uh, in the clip there. And, you know, this is, to put it in perspective, you know, this is, this is what we're talking about. It's, uh, it's a big old chunk of. Um, antenna to be able to swing around without stripping gears and, and things like this. So there was an awful lot of, of uh, sort of thought that went into my design for the an, the ultimate antenna tracker. You know, I took some of the negative things people said about antenna trackers. You know, things like oh, the you know the gears get mud inside them or debris, and it can cause a problem over time. And so I tried to address all of those things in my design. I mean, you know, the, there's other bits and pieces that we didn't see, the cover that goes over and encloses it entirely and make it kind of somewhat waterproof, dustproof. I'm looking at doing a, a complete and utter total tear down of this. Um, there's a load of stuff going on in the pan section that I'm keen to show you guys. Um, what, one of the issues with this was the, the sheer cost is you know, probably about 2,500 pound or something like that that I've had to put into it, you know, getting the parts machined and I think the servos are about $250 each. So there's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, it's difficult in terms of being easy to reproduce. So I've got a new design which uses slightly smaller servos, um, not quite the same sort of payload as we could expect from this one, but going more down the direction of belts and pulleys and perhaps even using more the accelerometer style of um, position holding rather than uh, as we'd normally see here with potentiometer feed back into the servos. I'm looking at more having an orientation sensor and it can basically derive its own uh, orientation itself based on an input of just literally a, a degrees um, of X, Y, or Z. And so, yeah, that's what I've got planned for the antenna tracker. I know there's a lot of people who've sent me emails, a lot of people in the comments who've been really keen to get an update on this and show more details, some of the parts. There's like more than 400 parts make up this thing. So it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a small project by any means. Um, and it was the first version as well. And it worked, you know, the minute I put it together, there was, I, I don't think there's really much that I, I ended up having to re-engineer or re-machine. Um, it all kind of went together just as I'd hoped. 
from my initial design. So really keen to show you more detail about that. So that'll be a video coming soon. But yeah, I'll be taking this thing apart and showing you how I've done some of the things in the pan section and a few little tips and tricks that I came across along the way as well. So stay tuned for that one. Teranis, RC mods and guides. Following on with the FPV and RC side of things, um, another thing I wanted to talk about was my new Tyrannis. Uh, and I say new, obviously it's new to me. Um, it's been around for a while. But one of the great things about the Tyrannis is just the, the sheer amount of modifications that you can do to it. Uh, and I've done quite a few to this one. Challenging convention. So I've got custom voice pack as well that I've Critical created. Warning. Oh. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few modifications I've done to this. In fact, I will admit, which I wouldn't normally, but I will admit, I even spanked the main motherboard, like magic smoke styly. Yeah, I never do that. Obviously, I'm a prototyping engineer. I mean, it just aren't, it's just not the sort of mistake I make, but you know, it happens. Flappy wire syndrome, I call it. So I completely spanked the main uh, motherboard, so I had to replace that. Um, so in the main video that I'm going to be doing about my Tyrannis, I'll, I'll be covering you know, some of the things that happened with that and um, how much of a pain in the watsits it was to replace the motherboard. So what I thought I'd do is give you a quick, uh, quick look inside. There's quite a few bits and pieces that I've got going on in here. I've taken the silicon cover off. Gives it a little bit more grip when you're holding it. Great addition, I like that. But I've actually got a, an, an additional Arduino built into this thing, which is controlling some other bits and pieces for me in there. We've got the six position switch modification. This is the speaker modification, so that the audio sounds a bit nicer. SMA connector upgrade, so that I can have a detachable antenna. And it means you can use slightly higher gain antennas um, and bits and pieces like that. I use, um, I use the TBS Crossfire. And so one of the ideas for the modification is that you need to give it external power to get your full two watt output power if that's what you're using. But yeah, there's quite a few modifications going on here, so I'm keen to do a video about this, um, show you some of the things I came up against and maybe some uh, some clues as to how to get started if you're looking to try and you know do your own custom voices or um, things like the graphics on the screen as well, boot screens, things like that. Uh, there was a few, few bits and pieces I ran into trouble, um, so I was hoping I could make some sort of like a fast track guide um, for the main the most popular modifications that we do to a, to a Tyrannis. I've used Futaba for probably 20 years uh, plus, uh, nearly 25 years I've been flying, so yeah, and I've always had a Futaba. Uh, so for me, this is the first time I've moved on to a non-Futaba controller, but I think with the open source, um, and obviously the, the, the way the software works is fully upgradable. Um, I love the little bits and pieces that you can get. Um, I've, even, I've even got a, uh, a switch here, that I'm going to be replacing um, from one of the existing ones just because it, it suits my style. So I might cover that in the video as well. So again, in the description below, let me know if that's something you're into. If you've got yourself a Tyrannis or it's something you may look into to, to buy yourself, probably going to cover some of the modifications that, uh, that you might want to do and maybe some of the ones that aren't worth doing. And ultimately, how to avoid spanking your motherboard. Uh, no flappy wires. So stay tuned for that one. And again, in the comments, let me know if that's something you, you're interested in and you know we'll get a vote up on that. So yeah, my Tyrannis, love it. Uh, done loads of mods, looking forward to sharing them with you. Bug out, survival and bushcraft. So anyone who knows me knows I'm banging to bushcraft. I love the whole wild camp. I love the bugging out, um, you know, getting into nature, getting into the wilderness and trying to survive for a weekend uh, with minimal amounts of bits and pieces. So one of the videos that I'm planning to do, uh, there's been a few people uh, with the bushcraft video uh, from last year. Um, if you haven't seen that, link in the description, go check it out. It's had a great review. Really appreciate the, the response I got back on that video. Um, and in fact, I, I might do a little reveal at some point about some of the things that went on behind the scenes, quite interesting. But one of the things I've been asked is, you know, one of the things, what do I take with me? Um, how do I fit it all into one pack? Um, so that's one of the things I want to show you as well. Um, and I'll break down exactly what I fit into my pack, um, what I take with me, uh, some of the items that I really love, uh, which I think are worth having a good review on. Um, so you can see for yourself uh, some of the reasons why I choose the things I choose. We'll, we'll have a video uh, that describes some of the things I take in my medical kit, for example. And we've got 
you know, virtually everything you could want in there and I've got a good pack together for that. Um, so anyone who wants to put their own pack together, uh, I'll be able to sort of offer a list of things that I take in mind and you can see for yourself. I've got things like the fire kit, um, good to have a good fire kit with you as well. I'm gonna go through all that. Um, also my sleep system, uh, I touched on in the bushcraft video, but I'd like to do a little bit more of an in-depth video about my sleep system, the reason why I've chosen the things that I have. I, I've also got the EDC, the Everyday Carry Pack. Uh, this is the 511 Tactical, uh, which is the Moab 10. And this one is also 511 Tactical. Uh, I, love the, I love the brand, um, the, the packs are, are beautifully made. I mean, literally the sort of pack you only need to buy it once, so they're not cheap, but I feel like I'm getting my money's worth with it big time. Um, so I'll be doing a review almost of the pack as a whole because um, I love it so much and then hopefully we can get something out of that. I've got a few friends of mine as well who want to put their own packs together and they keep asking me, you know, to put a list together. So I thought, you know, what better to use that opportunity. I'll do a video, complete pack reveal, open it all up, show everything that's inside it and hopefully you might better get some tips from it if you're looking to build your own pack. Anyway, that's another one that's coming up. So anyone who's you know, up for that, make sure you keep subscribed um, so as you don't know, miss out on new videos that I'm gonna be launching, one of them gonna be this. Um, so yeah, keep your heads up and uh, we'll move on to the next one, what's coming up. I am Tia. Andologies, DIY, artificial intelligence. This is one of my favorite projects and it's been going on for some years. And I have promised myself that I'm gonna make some progress and I'm gonna get it finished. So what is it? Well, let's get her fired up. I'm obviously gonna be doing a full video on this, uh, you know, with a bit more detail about what it's all about and you know, how I've made it. But Tia, the tactical intelligence assistant, I'll let her introduce herself to you. Welcome, I'm Tia, your tactical intelligence assistant. Intelligence is my middle name. Gotta love that. This is my lady, her name's Tia, as you heard. Basically like a DIY, AI kind of a system. It's, it started life as many things and it's all become rolled into one now. Primarily it was gonna be my FPV ground station, uh, which it still is, the main brains behind my ground station, which uh, again is another video with um, a Peli case uh, that it'll all be built inside. Now this all function as the main brain kind of thing behind the whole operation. But also it's, it's designed to be a mobile tactical assistant. Ideally like a mobile security system. So you think like bugging out or like the bushcraft if you're at camp, uh, you can have a mobile uh, sort of military style peli case. Uh, if the grid goes down, you know, apocalyptic zombie apocalypse or whatever, um, that's the only case you need to grab and set it up. You've got wireless sensor nodes, you know, PIRs you can strap on tree trunks and you can create a wireless perimeter. Uh, now I'm using the LoRa modules, uh, RFM 96 modules, which are the low, long range, low power. And theoretically you can get like, you know, hundreds of kilometers of range uh, using LoRa RF technology. Um, I've played around with a few different things. I've played around with the RFM 69, which is not LoRa, but it's, um, you know, you know, it's, that, that's not too bad, but you're not getting hundreds of kilometers. And equally, I've played around with the um, NRF24, the 2.4 gigahertz data transceivers. Uh, that was originally what I used for the nodes, the wireless nodes. And I've, I've designed quite a few individual nodes that all serve different functions. I've got laser brake beams, PIR detectors, vibration sensors. I've even got a, a Geiger counter to measure radioactivity. So the idea is it's like, you know, an all-in-one, uh, tactical assistant you take with you, mobile, portable. It's also become part of my FPV main brain. Now the main features of it, if you've got the TFT touchscreen uh, interface, which I've sort of designed along the lines of almost like a smartphone interface, um, as you'd expect, it's sort of commonplace. And you know, it's been some challenges along the way, you know, some highly, highly complex things I had to overcome, things like, you know, building from scratch, you know, things like QWERTY keyboards, touchscreen, keyboards, you know, some tricky things like that. The voice synthesis um, has taken quite a lot of time and I've had to literally individually cut up each of the soundtracks uh, and obviously write the algorithms that build the sentences together um, automatically. And the main brain behind it, the main, um, the main CPU is the Teensy 3.6 running at 180 megahertz. 
and the CPU. And I've got some modified libraries that are running some really nice, fast graphics for the TFT screen. And I've spent an awful lot of time on animations, on really nice, high quality graphics. And at the moment, I think there's about a hundred and something pages of data. Now, one of the other smart uh, things I've done with this is I've got the a GSM, a GSM module working with it. Uh, so it means that I can retrieve data from the internet via 3G uh, network. Um, and equally, I can send commands via text message, it can send me emails, and I've built an online server, uh, a custom backend, which can take all the data from all the nodes. She passes that up to the internet via Wi-Fi or the 3G network, um, and so I can log the data remotely, I can access it remotely, um, and I can send remote commands. And what's more, with the voice synthesis that I've built, it's allowed me to be able to interface with things like ham radios. And so now you can be off camp if you've got it as your, as your sort of like um, your mobile security system if you're on camp. You can literally just have your ham radio with you if you're going off camp. And if anyone breaks the perimeter or something happens as a fire in the camp or you know one of the air quality sensors detects a high level of carbon monoxide or something, She'll actually call you or talk to you via the ham radio and inform you of any anything. And you can you can send hash key back um, using the DTMF tones to send commands back to Tia, retrieving information or what, or shutting something down or, or whatever command you're sending. It's a very complex project, and and you know we're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lines of custom code that that I've I've been writing over the last sort of you know, maybe four or five years, I guess. And each time I add things onto it, earthquake detection, stuff like this, I'm always thinking of new things to add in. Uh, I've even included things like resistor color code function to be able to work that out and things and just, you know, add as many tools in there as possible so that it becomes, you know, like a single functioning uh, tactical intelligence system. It's going to be an ongoing project, you know, I've got an awful lot of um, build log that I'm going to need to keep up to date with for my own purposes as well as obviously sharing some of the things that I've learned with it. I go back to something like it's like a year later and I can't remember how I solved it or, or what the link of the place was that I got the data from. So it's, it's important for me as well to try and keep up a form of a build log uh, to follow the progress of Tia as she progresses into potentially in the future some form of a um, a product that I'd you know, look to bring to market, uh, or maybe even open source it, depending on what happens with the channel and things like that. But yeah, I mean, I've got you know things like 20 plus fonts that I've designed from scratch, custom fonts. Um, so I'm keen to let you in uh, and see some of those as well and how I've made them. Uh, hopefully, if anyone's interested in electronics or programming, Arduinos, things like that. Um, I've got a whole series of, of videos that I've got um, planned, uh, which should help people get into it and um, you know follow me along with some of my projects and uh, and ultimately I'd love to get your input on some of them as well. I'm sure you guys got some great ideas on some things that I could add in uh, once you see the full demonstration uh, of it working. So that's a that's a, a whole future set of videos that are going to be coming up no, no matter what. Uh, I'll be really interested to get your feedback moving forward. It's about getting yourself in the comments and letting me know what you want to know more about. So uh, so that's Tia. It's one close to my heart. I've put, I've put a lot into it. So I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. So. Up and coming, FPV and RC builds. Next up for 2019 is definitely going to be more flying and more building of RC aircraft. I've got a bunch of stuff that I've got ongoing projects. Uh, there's a build log that I'm really keen to share with you. I'm going to be building a uh, mini Talon. Uh, this is the fuselage. Here's the wings. So it's going to be reasonably sexy. So looking forward to getting that built. So I'll be doing a video showing the build log of the Mini Talon. Anyone who knows me, I'm into quadcopters as well. I fly RC helicopters, planes, rotary, you name it. Team Black Sheep Discovery. This is my old faithful, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is going to be uh, if this is going to be decommissioned this year. I do like the form factor. I like the size. I like a you know I like they've got a bit of long range in there. I'm running 2.4 gigahertz on this one with again the the TBS Crossfire long range UHF. Uh, but this is actually, this shows how old it is. Look, we're running a, a, a NASA version one. It wasn't even called the NASA one. It was just literally the NASA. Um, so yeah, very, very old flight controller, but still, still absolutely rock solid. Uh, I've got an Immersion RC uh, on-screen display on there um, with the telemetry feedback via the audio channel, um, which I use on my, uh, on my iPad, on my 
ground station mount. So I've got <clears throat> something I'm going to be doing with this. I may even I may even upgrade it to a slightly different frame, uh, but keep the kind of size um, so I can use the motors and things. But yeah, it's showing its age a bit, but I do want to get a few extra uh, couple of flights out of this before the year's out. Maybe it'll get decommissioned. Maybe it won't. And also my ZMR trusty ZMR 250, um, which I've just actually had to rebuild. I had a bit of a bit of a crash with a friend of mine, uh, mid-air collision, so that was interesting. And then I, I came in too hard. I overcooked it and buckled one of the motors. Um, these are the Cobra Racing Edition. Um, CM2206, these are. So uh, yeah, four cell, I run with this. Got a uh, run cam Eagle camera on this one. Love the run cams. So this is getting back in the air. I've just replaced the motor on it. I haven't given it its first test flight yet, but that'll be something as well that I'm gonna be doing more of. Um, I've got a whole bunch of stuff um, that I'd love to do reviews on as well, um, and things that I've wasted a lot of time and money on that I wanna tell you guys not to bother, uh, not to bother with. But yeah, anyone who's into quadcopters, uh, FPV, um, I'm gonna be doing an awful lot more of that. Uh, like I say, need a test flight on that. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with my TPS Disco. We've got the Mini Talon build as well coming up. I've got a rat's nest full of electronics that is kind of already completed that are just waiting to be finalized to go in. Um, and the other thing with the Mini Talon is um, I need to sort of make a decision really. Um, and again, in, in the video that I'll make for the Mini Talon build, I'll maybe bring this up, but I've got the Sunny Sky small motor, uh, but I've also got the T motor, the AT2814, which is another one that people use for the Mini Talon. So it's a tricky one because you can go sort of one or two ways, you know, you can go, you know, slightly heavier, a bit more power, um, or you can go the lightweight, keep it lean uh, and uh, kind of style of flight. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, so I might be looking for some input on that. But yeah, if uh, you want to see more of the builds um, and the flying from the RC and FPV aircraft, then of course, you know, big it up in the comments and, you know, I'll look at that and make sure I bump things to the top um, if I get a lot of interest on something. So, but that's definitely something I'll be working on this year. Um, I need to get in the air more. Um, I need to renew my BMFA membership as well. Um, so uh, I'll get that done and then we can go and do some test flights and, and have some fun together. So that'd be cool. Solar and off-grid power banks. The next thing I'm going to be sharing with you this year, 2019, is going to be the work that I've been doing with renewable energies. Um, I've been playing around with solar panels for many, many years. Um, and over the last few years, particularly, I seem to have done a lot of work with some clients with things like um, sort of quite sophisticated battery technologies, um, some reasonably interesting uh, concepts with renewable energies as well. Um, and I've learned quite a lot along the way, you know, from playing around with the small ones, you know, slightly medium sized solar panels. Um, I've also got a couple of big, um, couple of hundred watt ones on the roof of the office. Um, and I have those coming down into a battery bank system, uh, like an off-grid uh, battery bank. Um, now, originally I started off with things like the gel cells, the big, big lead acid kind of, uh, like the sort of things you get in disability uh, scooters. So I've got a couple of those that I used to use and I take them camping with me and things and a, a small solar panel. But I wanted something that was a little bit more portable. So I started looking into other, other versions of sort of off-grid like a power wall, you know, Tesla power wall, but more of a mobile type thing. And so I came up with this one, which originally was going to be like where the tier, you've seen the tier project was going to be built into a case like this with these are headway, headway cells, lithium phosphate cells, 4S. Also, I've been working on something a little bit more juicy, which comes in something more like this. Now this is using lithium to titanate cells. LTO cells they are, and they're 60 amp hour, and the weight of those is far less than the equivalent in terms of a, a lead acid, like a ledger battery. I'm moving up to the LTO cells, you can get sort of like tens of thousands of recharges versus less than a thousand um, for like a, a typical lead acid ledger battery or gel cell. So um, I've got a lot of work I've been doing on that and I've had some pretty good success, so I wanna share some of those things with you. Um, and there's a few things that haven't worked out quite as well as planned. Um, so that's another thing as well, the, the renewable, the green energy, the power wall, power bank kind of stuff, uh, mobile power bank. Um, it's a big part of what I've been working on uh, with some clients. So again, I'm, I'm keen to share that kind of stuff with you and you know, going forward, we'll see what we come up with at the end of it. So yeah, big thumbs up in the comments and stuff if that's something that again, you're interested in and you wanna see more of that. 
I can show you an awful lot of stuff to do with uh, renewable energies, uh, different types of batteries, why, what batteries you want to use in what circumstances, um, and ultimately finding a way of building your own power wall or portable battery bank, um, which is far cheaper than you know, what you're getting off the shelf. So um, yeah, so stay tuned for that as well. More mods and closing message. So if you're still here, then uh, all I can say is fair play because it's been a fair old long video and I do apologise. Um, I know people like things to be nice and short and I do tend to babble on quite a lot, but the fact that you're still here shows there must be something that you're interested in. So, uh, I mean, I'm probably going to make this the last one, but um, I've got loads more projects that I want to share with you that I will be sharing with you as the year progresses and uh, as the months go by. Um, as you've seen already, some of the ones that I've shown you, um, I'll be doing quite quite soon, uh, getting some videos out there. This is another one which is, you know, one of those ongoing projects that's been going on so long and it's just sat in a drawer um, and I'm really keen to get this up and running. Essentially what it is, I've, I've been using, uh, for this is my FPV ground station that I use, um, I tend to go for a pole mount style. I know a lot of people do use the goggles. I have glasses and I have astigmatism in one eye, so the, the goggles for me not ideal, but I'm sure there is, you know, when I find a pair that are any good and I can wear my glasses with them and things, then I'll, you know, I'll invest in them. But for the time being, I use uh, monitors on a pole <clears throat> and I quite like that particularly. It allows me to switch quite quickly from, um, from being first person view to line of sight view as I'm coming into land uh, without having to take goggles off and things. So I'm a big fan of the, big fan of the TV monitor on a pole rather than the goggles. And I've been using the, the, Feel World, um, Feel World, sorry, Feel World monitor. This is a 10 inch one that's uh, 16 by 9. Um, and I've done quite a few modifications to it, primarily to do with the, the, the power source. I mean, I, I've switched a lot of these out to these kind of uh, Sony battery cells for cameras. But I do like them, I think they're very convenient. You know, you can literally just clip it in. And I've built a switch here um, just using a uh, a small circuit, you know, is a flip-flop on-off toggle button uh, with an LED um, to show me that the power's on. And a couple of sockets that I've put in here to allow me to feed out the telemetry audio from the Immersion RC. Um, and that's what you use for the antenna tracker data. And uh, there's an app that you use on your iPad as well that can show you a real-time Google, Mac, Google Maps overlay. Yeah, this was one of the modifications that I did. There's quite a few things going on inside here. And I've been using these twist lock mounts, you know, where you can, you know, just twist it in any angle and clamp it onto the pole. Um, and that's been serving my purpose for, you know, for several years. Um, but I've had this, this is a, this is 10 inch uh, and this is 16 by nine. Um, and this is a 12 inch, four by three ratio. I like that because of course, you know, when we're transmitting our analog video signals, they're essentially four by three SD Im images anyway. And so what I find is, you know, with, with the widescreen 16 by nine, you know, you're, you're cropping off bits and pieces or you're squidging it up, which, you know, doesn't look great for your on-screen display data and things like that. So I'm really keen to get this one up and running. And the thing is, this is, this is the actual, this is the monitor panel for it. The 12 inch versus the 10 inch. It's not just the fact that it's 12 inches, um, it's the fact that obviously the, the, the four by three screen ratio makes it far more, a far fuller image that you're looking at um, without any squishing. So it's not a bad monitor. I mean, it's not as good as some other ones that I've had in terms of um, the, the brightness and the contrast ratio, but you know, it's a nice big screen. There's obviously a, there's a sun visor to go on here. Now, this this is the original this is the original electronics that sort of came with the came with the monitor if you like and all I've got here is a a little cable that I've tapped onto the video input just parallel to the video input AV input but what I've got going on in here this is all this is all my nonsense right I mean you can you can buy monitors now which you know have got the um, RC um, 5.8 receivers and things built inside it. Uh, that's been happening for a while and you know I started building this before that was really a thing and then it got shelved and you know I'm looking at getting it back up to life um, since all the work I've put into it you know I mean we've got we've got a similar thing I've got Arduino Nano sitting in here which is controlling various things this is a, an Immersion RC uh, 5.8 diversity receiver that I've embedded um, and I've just got SMA connectors linked to the side so I can have just the antennas 
plugged into the back. But there's also other things going on. You know, I've got an amplifier here with modified speakers and some others, um, some other audio-based things because, again, because I like to use the Immersion RC with the audio telemetry uh, that uses the left channel, or is it the right channel? I always forget. Uh, but it uses one of the stereo audio channels to pass through the data and transmit that via your normal video transmitter. So I've got things here which, you know, break out that audio and amplify it accordingly and things like that um, with some switches on the back. But the other change that I've made as well, in fact, I might just, I'm just gonna mount it, remove it from the mount, rather than those twist lock, rather than those twist lock mounts, I'm now gonna move on to these RAM mounts, which is kind of like what you find on motorbikes and things. Um, you'd like a RAM mount, you tighten, you know, any angle you can tighten it up. I've now modified that onto the back of here. So here's the back. And you can see there's the RAM mount ball. Um, I've got a carbon fiber plate, a carbon fiber plate here that reinforces it with the RAM mount on the back. Because um, it's quite heavy, you know, once you've got your batteries on there, it's not a lightweight thing, so you need to give it quite a lot of support. And again, I've done the same thing here with the, the removable batteries. Um, now I've done two, because of the size of the screen, I've got enough space, I can have two. Um, and so what it means is that I can either have like small ones like this, um, if I want just a nice lightweight thing, and even that small one, to be honest, is gonna run this screen for more than an hour, so it's quite a few flights, or you've got the larger ones. And so the reason I've got two as well is it means that if I turn it on, obviously it's not plugged into the screen, but we give it some power. And you see, this is part of what the Arduino Nano does, to be honest, it's just like sensing the voltages of each of the power packs. But the reason of having two in parallel means that I can hop, I can literally hot swap a battery and you see the power stays on and we'll get a little uh, error flash here. And I can just swap one of the batteries over and it will carry on going. And again, I can pull that one out and replace the battery as well. And so it allows me to, you know, have hot swappable batteries because, you know, extended flight times and things, if you're doing a UAV and you're sort of like got a two hour flight time, um, you might even need to switch the batteries out while you're going. Um, so there's things like that. I've got some switches here that handle, um, this is the power for the Immersion RC. You see the LED comes on on this SMA connector to show that's the antenna that's currently being selected by the diversity electronics. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few things going on here. This is an RGB LED, so these will change color as the batteries reduce in power um, and things like that. So one of the things left to do on this is um, obviously tidy up the inside. I mean, it's not too bad, but I did this such a long time ago that to be honest, when I look at it now, I'm like, really? I mean, there's so many things I'd do differently, it's not even funny, but you know, it's perfectly functional. This here, um, you can see I've got a, um, um, a diode essentially, two diodes going in so that you know the, each battery doesn't try charging each other. Um, so I mean again I'll explain more of this in detail in the actual video but I thought I'd show this to you because this is another example of one of those projects that gets shelved, it gets put in the cupboard, I forget about it or I just don't get time. And you know summertime's coming up um, in the next few months, I really want to get flying again so um, I'm keen to get these things tipped up and up to shape and of course if I've got a 12 inch monitor why use a 10 inch one, yeah? So that's the plan. Um, and like I say, I've, I've changed up to the RAN mounts. Also on the, on the pole here, you'll see I have my Crossfire um, module actually mounted on the, on the antenna pole. But I like that because obviously I can extend it uh, up nice and high um, and I can get out of the, the reflection zone of the ground and things like this. And this is my external diversity receiver, depending on what, and again, Immersion RC. Big fan of Immersion RC stuff, they're very good quality parts, and of course, I used to work with them <laughs> for some time, so a little bit biased. But yeah, so again, I've done that same mod here um, with the external removable battery pack. And again, this is just feed straight in, the power feed straight in. I've got the same circuit here for the, you know, the on, off kind of an affair. Bosh, bosh, yeah, very easy. On she goes, uh, I've also, created a hot shoe mount here, which I find quite convenient. So on the pole here, I use hot shoe mounts and uh, boom, it's done. Uh, give it a little tighten, 
So uh, yeah, that's kind of how I roll with the pole. And this is a, this is a circular wireless, circularly polarized 5.8 antenna, beautiful. Uh, and again, Immersion RC, just a regular omnidirectional for, for the local flying on and coming into land. But yeah, highly effective. I've had a good three, four kilometers using this. So, you know, with a, with a regular 600 milliwatt, 5.8 uh, 5 uh, 5 transmitter, again, Immersion RC. Yeah, about three kilometers and it's pretty good. The only thing about 5.8 compared to 2.4 is I think 2.4 you tend to have a little bit more of a fade off of signal, whereas 5.8 you've either got it or you haven't, you know, and it's you can get caught out um, all of a sudden as you're flying under a tree. <laughs> but yeah, you know, this is pretty good. I use 5.8 for quite a lot. Uh, so yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll be doing a video that will go over sort of how I lay mine out, the reason why I have certain things the way I do. I've rigged up a custom uh, a custom cable that goes from the module into the back of my Tyrannis um, to control uh, and receive from the, the, the uh, TBS Crossfire. Sort of reasonable sized project that I really want to get finished. I mean, the, big, the biggest part of the job really is I'm going to need to design a fascia cover for the back uh, which will take into account all these extra buttons and you know sliders and volume control buttons and things into the back plate. Um, so I may involve you in that, you know, and I'll show you what I'm doing, how I do it. And I have a friend of mine who who will do the machining for me. So that should be interesting. So again, you know, keep tuned, keep subscribed, keep checking back my videos, uh, and I'm sure there'll be something there for everyone. Um, like I say, you know, it's been a long video, so I do apologise, but. You know, I wanted to just get it out there, um, you know, try and highlight some of the things I'm going to be working on with you guys uh, and sharing with you. Uh, and of course, try and get some feedback um, as to what sort of things you want to see the most. Um, and obviously, I can drive my I can drive my channel accordingly and make sure that um, I'm delivering stuff that you actually care about. So um, I care about an awful lot of things. I've got probably about another hundred things here that I could uh, I could talk to you about and, and want to show you. But um, obviously, time's getting on and I tend to go on. So um, there it is. Uh, this is going to be the sorts of things that I'm going to be bringing to you this year. Um, I'm going to try very, very hard to try and be a little bit more um, consistent with my delivery of videos because, you know, the channel's been going like more than 10 years um, and it's quite a pitiful number of videos I've put out. Um, I'm always making videos for my clients and never making for myself. So I guess that's the way it goes. Um, but I really appreciate everybody who's made it this far and got to see me after a bath and a shave. <laughs> so yeah, no, I do appreciate your time. And, and of course, you know, your any, uh, anything you want to say in the comments, uh, good or bad, but of course, if you can't, can't be nice, at least try to be funny. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm really interested to get your feedback. And so, you know, keep yourself, look, share the video, of course, you know, we need to try and build this channel up. We need to try and get, you know, increase the, increase the viewership. Um, and of course, when that happens, I'll feel more obliged, I'll feel more obligated to, to try and deliver more to you guys in, in return. So um, help me to help you, you know, and give me some encouragement. And, um, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. And in the meantime, I've been Andology, and thank you very much for checking out my channel. Please like, share and subscribe.